First of all, I want to say thank you to all of the people who are making contributions to our channel and to our homestead. People are sending donations, dropping off boxes. We even have one individual that's helping out with the graphics for our videos. Not to mention all of the comments, likes, shares, kind words, and prayers that you guys are sending out. I thank the Father for putting on you guys' hearts to help. And thank you guys for doing so. What you're doing is very appreciated. Thank you. All right, well, let's learn about to be all there. Hey, y'all. Coach and if I here, talking about to be of. Now, to be of is a minor feast day, which means that it's not part of the feast that you find over there in Leviticus 23. It's not a mandatory feast. In fact, many people are not even aware of this feast. I one only found out about this feast a few weeks ago when I was studying about Tisha the Av, which is the ninth of Av, or the fast of the fifth month. See, I'm one of those guys that read the Bible looking for things that I'm held accountable for, stuff that I'm going to get in trouble for if I don't do, and being a minor feast, I really haven't paid attention to, to the Av at all. So in this video, what I plan to do is learn a little bit about to be of. I want to tell you when it is, what it is that we're supposed to be doing on that day, and give you a few historical facts on to be of. I don't plan on covering everything in this video. We have a few days left, so I will make at least one more video covering what I've learned up until that day. Now. First of all, let's jump over here and look at Google and start to talk about when to be of 2020 will fall. Now, a lot of these holy days, just like the holidays, if you go into Google and put in the holiday or the holy day, Google will give you the date. It's usually the date that it falls on your calendar, your man-made calendar, that Gregorian calendar that's on our walls. But as many of us has found out, that calendar don't always match up with the lunar calendar or the sacred calendar or the Enoch calendar, the original calendar. That calendar that is talked about over there in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14 that's based on the moon, the stars, and the sun. So, let's go in and verify this date right quick. Now, what you're looking at here is the fraction of the moon illuminated for 2020. This comes from the Astronomical Applications Department of the U.S. Naval Observatory, which used to have all of this information on it a while back, but praise the Lord, I saved it to my computer before they moved their website. And we use this information to verify the date of the new moon. Looking here in the month of July, you see the zero moon fell on the 20th. Now, the zero moon is man's new moon. When you look at your Gregorian calendar, if it has the phases of the moon on it and it says new moon, it's going to list the 20th as the new moon. But that's not the sacred new moon. That's not the biblical new moon because the biblical new moon relied on priests and Levites to go out and verify the moon for themselves, meaning they had to go out and actually see it before they declared a new month had started. And of course they would see nothing on a 0% illuminated moon. They wouldn't actually see it until the evening of the 21st. Right after the sun went down, they would see 2% of the moon illuminated the first crescent of the moon, they would then start blowing trumpets and let everybody know that a new month had started. That would have all occurred on the evening of the 21st. Now that's the way I verify the new moon digitally. I do try to get out there and lay my eyes on the moon myself, but since we aren't able to do that in this video, let's jump over here to renewedmoon.com and get secondary confirmation from those guys here recently I have been relying on this website because they're pretty good at listing the dates of the sighting of the new moon 
and as you can see here that the moon was sighted on the evening of the 21st of July so that's in fact secondary confirmation the evening of July the 21st was the beginning of the fifth month the month we call Av or Ab so we're looking over here at a calendar for July of 2020 the evening of the 21st would have been the first day of the month that would make the evening of the 31st as the start of the 11th day of the fifth month and the evening of the 4th of August as the beginning of the 15th day of the fifth month and we look back over here and Google actually has it right this time to be of 2020 for the 15th day of the fifth month will begin on August the 4th in the evening time and it will last until the evening of the 5th of August now I feel the urge to take a jab at those guys who are still searching for Pentecost 2020 I laugh at them guys sometimes because I say that they're really still searching for Pentecost 2017 or 2018 if you go back and you look at their channels, they have been pushing Pentecost forward each month since 2017. So they really haven't had the chance to celebrate Pentecost 2017 yet. And here it is, August, and they're still talking about Pentecost. Well, Pentecost falls in the third month, and they're still pushing it out. And they're going to continue to push it out if you pay attention they'll have Pentecost in August and Pentecost in September and Pentecost in December they'll keep pushing Pentecost off and the reason why is because they believe that Pentecost is tied to the rapture now I did a video not too long ago showing that there is nothing in the Bible that says that Pentecost and the rapture go hand in hand there has been an artificial connection made between Pentecost and the rapture based on a book written on the subject and I listed that book in that video but it's just like the Left Behind series where somebody wrote a popular book and now when it's considered the gospel it's like some people have what I call the Left Behind Church but anyway we'll save that for another video and this one we're talking about Tubiav and again the date of Tubiav is the evening of August the 4th now one thing you can find on our channel praise our father in heaven we've been pretty consistent about it in the past and that's giving you the dates of the holy days Passover unleavened bread the feast of tabernacles we've gone in every year for the past few years and done this verification based on the sightings of the moon to let you know exactly when these days start and they don't always match up with Google if you caught our Pentecost video, which we put out several of them because there was a day difference between what Google told us as far as the date of Passover and the date of Unleavened Bread, it was off by a day. And I believe that's why our Father has put it on my heart to go in and check these days every year. I've actually been doing this since 1995, going in and looking and verifying not only the Holy Days, but also the Sabbath Days. And that brings me to my next point is that to be of being the 15th day of the month is actually a Sabbath day let me briefly tell you how this works for those who are new to the sacred calendar or the biblical calendar now this is talking about the seventh sacred month which has atonement day and tabernacles but we could use it to get an understanding of the fifth month as well I haven't drawn up a calendar like this for the fifth month I probably will do so before my next video comes out on to be of but the way this works is on the first day of the month would have, which would have been at the 21st or the 22nd of July depends on how you count some people start in the evening and some people count the whole day as the first day which would have been the 22nd of July that would have been what you call new moon day it is not considered a work day now for those who are familiar with the sacred calendar this is one of the biggest errors that is made when calculating the Sabbath day even with some popular YouTube channels 
is that they failed to keep the new moon day as a sacred day. They count it as a work day. But when you look over here at Ezekiel chapter 45 and verse 17, you'll see that it is not a work day. It is in fact a holy day, similar to the Sabbath days. The new moon day is an extremely important day when it comes to the third temple, that temple built on the hearts of humanity. Because like it says here in Ezekiel chapter 46 and verse 1, the gate of the inner court is open on the new moon day. It's open on the Sabbath day and is open on the new moon day. So the new moon day is not really considered a work day. It is actually a worship day. It is a day when many have a new moon celebration similar to what they do on the Sabbath day. And I keep saying similar for two reasons. One, being that it is not a Sabbath day, you will find people doing work like cooking or chopping wood or lighting fires and such on the new moon day. And two, when you look in at the biblical calendar, you will see that we have just celebrated a Sabbath day, usually the day before or maybe two days prior to the new moon day. And so in a lot of cases, there will be two Sabbath days back to back. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but let me briefly show you how this works. You have the new moon day on the first day of the month. Like I said, the 21st, I call it the 22nd because I like to think about it as that daytime period, that period when we have light outside. That would have been a 22nd would have been the new moon day, the whole day of the 22nd until the, tw until the sun went down. That would have made the 23rd the first work day. It would have started on the evening of the 22nd, but you would have actually started working during the daylight hours of the 2nd or the 23rd of July. Your first work day would have been the 23rd, which was a Thursday. And then you would have counted around six, you would have done six days of work. That would have taken you to Tuesday, the 28th. And then you would have had a Sabbath day. So note. The Sabbath days fall on the 8th day of the month, the 15th day of the month, the 22nd, and the 29th day of the month. Don't let people confuse you when they say that the Sabbath day falls on the 7th day of the month. That is incorrect. It falls on the 7th work day, which is the 8th day of the month. But like we were talking about to be off, it falls on the 15th day of the month and just like the mandatory holy days passover pentecost and what we're looking at here tabernacles they all fall on the 15th day of the month that is a sabbath day so to be off also falls on the 15th day of the month it also falls on a sabbath day so that brings me to my next point. What is it that we should be doing on To Be Av? We should be honoring the Sabbath day on To Be Av. Now, we just finished with Tisha Be Av. This was on the ninth or the tenth day of the fifth month. Now, that was a day of fasting. And we learned about fasting over there in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. That's really important because when it comes to Atonement Day of 2020, we really need to know what we're doing when it comes to fasting. And I'm going to tell you to jump over there and look at Isaiah 58, particularly verse 6 and verse 7, because what you'll find is, is that fasting has nothing to do with abstaining from food and water. You see right there in verse 5 how he's telling them that you're fasting wrong. And then in verse 6 and verse 7, he tells them what a real fast is. And it should make sense when you think about the Messiah fasting for 40 days. A human being can't survive without food for 40 days. They can't even survive without water for seven days. But yet you think about Moses having broken the stone tablet, fasted for two 40 day periods back to back. That's 80 days of fasting. If fasting has something to do with bread and water, he would have died on Mount Horeb. I bring that all up talking about fasting because it's related to charitable deeds. And I believe, based on my own testimony, 
that honoring the fast in the correct way is a life-changing event. In 2018, I performed the Atonement Day fast according to Isaiah 58. On Atonement Day, I got the opportunity to go out and help some fatherless children and single moms and widows and other people on Atonement Day. The life-changing part of that is that it didn't stop on Atonement Day. That loving of my brother actually has lasted even until this day. My life was changed during that time because I have been fasting ever since. It's like there was a switch made on that atonement day. Well, I think this was what was supposed to happen on Tisha B'Av, where we would have started fasting. But in this case, we're actually leading up to Tu B'Av, which is a different kind of day. We're looking over here at Wikipedia and some other websites that give information about to be off. And one thing that we see is that it's called a holiday of love. According to the Mishnah, it is the perfect day to have weddings. That's why a lot of people are getting excited around this date is because they're waiting for the wedding supper. So it is like we have been in preparation since Tisha B'Av performing charitable deeds before we get to the big day which is to be of, which is the wedding feast. And that's similar to the way you have it over there in the seventh month, now that I think about it. You have the fasting day on the tenth day of the seventh month, which is atonement day. But then the mandatory feast starts on the fifteenth day of the month. I think that's significant, and the Father just brought it to me at this very moment. So I praise him for everything that he's sharing with us in this time. And again, I say, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because I'll probably talk more about this relationship in the next video we do on To Be Odd. And I plan on going through all of these websites you see up here on To Be Odd. Each one of these websites will probably give a bit of information about the holiday. But I believe I'm going to save that for the next video. You hear that chainsaw running in the background. That's kind of my cue that it's time to go to work. So I'm going to go ahead and end it there. So what you've gotten out of this video is the date of To Be Of, the verification of To Be Of, and you've also gotten what you should be doing on that date, and that's honoring the Sabbath day. So if you agree that this video has been helpful, go ahead and hit the like button and leave us a comment. And if you haven't done so already, hit that bell notification button and or that subscribe button so you can see the future videos that come out on the subject, as well as the videos that we'll do on Atonement Day, the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, and the Feast of Tabernacles, Father willing. In the meantime, keep doing charitable deeds and prepare for the Sabbath day starting on the evening of August the 4th. Pray for us and Shalom.